just taking a quick look at the function generate options. On the right go, you click on the source button, and it brings up this menu here. Uh, you've got two outputs, channel one and channel two. Channel, channel one. At the moment it's just set to a sine wave. A few different options, you got sine wave, square wave, ramp, pulse, DC, noise, built-in and arbitrary waveforms. Change frequency, you can sit here and twiddle the dial. It takes a bit of time, especially if you're in the kilohertz range or you're up to megahertz. The other option is you press the button in and it brings up this little on-screen display. It's a little bit fiddly to use because you always end up going past the number you want. But once you get used to it, it's not too bad. So you say 10 megahertz. There you go. Same with channel two, the same options. Uh, frequency, 100 kilohertz. And if you want to keep going and going to get to megahertz, it takes forever. So it was this one, two, 11. As you can see, the update rate is pretty good in these. Much better than the old DS1000 series. Let's see what the options are. Turn off channel 2. The other options you have are square wave. Like I said, that button's a bit hard to use. Not the cleanest looking output, but it works. Let's go up to the maximum, 25 megahertz. Looking at the practical applications of having a scope with a built-in function generator, I've got a Max 485 line driver set up here on the breadboard. So that little IC down there. I'm um, using channel one of the function generator to send in a square wave. And I'm looking at the two outputs of the differential driver. On the screen here, um, the non-inverting output of the driver is the first channel, which is in yellow, one down here. The inverting output of the driver is on channel two, which is the blue line here. We turn on our function generator. I've got channel 1 set to a 1 MHz square wave output and this is giving us our differential output. Looking at the options for the function generator, uh, for channel 1 you can see we've got 1 MHz for the frequency, 5 volt amplitude and no offset. If we change this frequency, we can turn the dial here. As you can see it's a little bit slow and it doesn't update the actual value until you stop turning it. Uh, and there might just be a bug that Rigel can fix later on. Uh, you can also press the button in and you can type in your value. So say I want to set 2 megahertz, go to 2, scroll all the way along to megahertz. And there you go. The max frequency when using a square wave is 15 megahertz. Uh, for this max 485, uh, the maximum frequency is 2.5 megabits, so it's running outside of its spec. As you can see, signals a little bit distorted. One of the slightly annoying things about using this menu is if you want to put in say two and a half megahertz you scroll around it's a bit fiddly you put in so you try to hit the uh, the dot there and it's put in a zero two point five now it's already something megahertz so if I want to press enter and just use two and a half megahertz you can't do that you still have to go scroll through and then select megahertz. Now if you're doing a lot of work with a function generator and you have the money to spend it's probably worthwhile getting a separate function generator but for the 200 odd dollars it costs to get this integrated it's a pretty good option if you don't have one already.